Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you capability analysis in Metab. Um, so let's assume that you do have some sort of data uh, that you collected uh, just to keep track of whether uh, your process is capable with the design specifications. Um, of course, whatever it is, um, it should come with some sort of design specifications, the lower specification limit and the upper specification limit. Um, if you remember, um, uh, we were just talking about this data set where we identified that we do have some variables and, and those were referred to the pain thickness on different cars, right? Well, of course, um, if you are applying a paint on a car, you should not really put it too thin or too, too thick. It's because you know it comes with design specifications should be within certain range. And remember the the basic philosophy of uh, Six Sigma is to keep your processes in within certain standards. That's what we um, looked into in module one when we analyzed um, upper specification limit versus lower specification limit with respect to your control charts. Okay, so today I'm going to dig further down into the subject. I'm going to show you how you can do this kind of analysis in Minitab. But let me give you um, a refresher on the theory of process capability analysis. So we do have uh, a bunch of formulas. Well, you we can see that on your textbook, um, but I don't really want you to stick to those formulas. I want you to be able to interpret what these terms mean, um, because Minitab is going to automatically calculate these values for you once you tell Minitab how to do it. Um, okay, so uh, we do have PP, PPK, CP, and CPK when it comes to measuring process capability and performance of your process. Um, what do they refer to? Well, they refer to variance and the bias. All right, so you might have too much variance in your data that you might see high spread, right? Meaning that your observations are all over the place where you want them to be in this single cir um, inner circle, right? You would like to see all these observations in this innermost circle, but they are all over the place and they are not really on any circle. They are barely on the circle, the largest circle, right? Here, you do still have high spread as well, a uh, high variance as well, but they are scattered, let's say randomly around the innermost circle, but still you do have a high spread or high variance in your, in your data. Well, we do have a measure that we can calculate the spread level, right? Um, on the other way, you could really minimize this variance. You might have a low spread, but your data may be too off from your innermost target, right? Um, yes, you're doing a good job controlling the variation, but you are far away from your target and that's not really good as well. And this is called uh, low centering or low bias. Well, this is actually high bias and this is low spread. Um, and then you do have a really, really low variance. Your points are really not all over the place. They are consolidated with low variance and they are accurately on the innermost circle. This is the identical, this is the, this is the ideal case that you would like to achieve. Well, how do you know where your process is, right? That is the define phase and also the measure phase that you could use to define your current process in Six Sigma operations. Okay, um, and we do have CP, CPK, PP and PPK to define uh, this uh, high spread, low spread versus high centering and low, low centering operations. Um, all right, so let's try to take a look at where we use them. Um, well, PP and PPK, those are more liberal well, compared to CP and CPK. Um, CP and CPK are going to be using your subgroups and they are going to be limiting the standard deviation calculations based on the subgroup. So those are more conservative. PP and PPK are less conservative uh, and they're going to be looking at your overall data set when um, it, they do try to make a decision on the, the spread and centering of your data. 
on, on your processes. Okay, so we tend to use PP and PPK as a measure of capability analysis. Um, then we are just initially starting out the process. Um, let's assume that you have a new machine or you, you have a new employee you're just starting and then you're just collecting some results on that employer on that machine. Um, doesn't matter whether it's a manufacturing process or a service process. Then you tend to calculate PP and PPK. But let's assume that you have an established process operation and you would like to, again, control the capability of that process or operation, then you tend to use CP and CPK measures, okay? Um, so what do we know about the good measures of CP and CPK and PP and PPK? Well, actually, we know that it is, well, actually, every industry, every operation is different, all right? But just a rule of thumb, um, anything that is greater than 1.33 is in the acceptable maintain category, right? Anything that is lower than 1.33, you should do something about that process or that operation, all right? Um, but as I said, every industry is different, has different standards. This is just across all industries, all, all industries or operations. A 1.33 is just a rule of thumb, all right? How can I use it in my data? Well, let's assume that, again, I do have 25 different samples so just to remind you what my data looks like. Um, excuse me. Um, and then you do have for each subgroup, for each sample, um, five different observations. And let's try to see if I could do um, any um, capability analysis in Meta. And if you go to stats tab, and if you go to quality tools, there's capable to six packs analysis. There's capable analysis as well, but capable to six pack is going to give you much more information on a single click. You could do capable analysis um, on your own, but let me show you how to do capable to six pack analysis. Click normal. In this data set, it is very important to know how to uh, make Minitab read your data. So if you look at my data, what do I have? I do have my subgroups here and the five different observations stored in the same row for each subgroups, right? So I have to tell this Minitab. So I go to stats, quality tools, capable to six packs and normal. And uh, do I keep my data in this single column? No. So therefore I have to select this option. It says that subgroups across rows off. I do keep my rows in observation one, observation two, observation three, observation four, and observation five. Um, you have to enter lower specification limit and upper specification limit so that this process analysis can run because CPK, CP, PP, and PPK, um, they are all dependent on lower specification limit and upper specification limit. For the sake of simplicity, let's just put the five as my lower specification limit and 115 as my upper specification limit. There are a bunch of options, different types of tests that we can select, but I'm just going to just hit okay. And look at the results. All right. Um, let me close this and you can see that you know, I do have a bunch of data set that I have from MATLAB, sorry, Minitab. And one thing that I have here is very important. It is called process uh, control charts. It gave me X bar chart and R bar chart. Remember, upper specification limit, USL, and lower specification limit, LSL, they come from either my design operations, design plans, or my um, vendor standards, or, you know, uh, those are certain standards that come with uh, out the control of my processes. But the upper control limit and lower control limit are actually the data points that are found by analyzing your data. If you look at the, the X chart, you see that we are plotting the sample mean of the first sample. So this first blow dot is actually the sample mean. We go to data. 
This blue dot is actually the subgroup ones, for, uh, the average of observations in subgroup one. It is actually 99.8. That's what we found here, right? And it is on your uh, first blue dot. Your second blue dot in this X bar chart is actually 102. You can see it is 102. So X bar chart is actually looking at the average of your subgroups and it finds the upper control limit and lower control limit from the data. And it is plotting these subgroup averages and trying to show you whether there is any search and trend that you should be aware of. So what we can do with this control chart? Well, if, first of all, if there's any blue point, uh, either below the lower control limit or upper uh, or exceeding the upper control limit, then we just raise a red flag saying that my operation is not under statistical process control. Well, that is one thing that you can do, right? If you have certain trend in this data, for example, if these blue dots are all the way increasing, it means that you do have something that's coming out of control and you should definitely stop this process and take a look at it before you hit um, above the upper control limit. That's something that you can tell by just looking at the XPAR chart. Well, Minitab is nice because as you have more data, you can just hit update this graph and it will update it, right? Um, that's for the control uh, chart um, export control chart. Right? And it also gives you information for the ranges. Um, similarly, remember I calculate the ranges uh, in my second video here on C C8 column. And this is the range that comes for the subgroup one. And it is 15. So let's take a look at our chart. Our chart is basically the range chart. Again, Minitab calculated upper control limit and lower control limit for me. Uh, and then it basically tells me that my sample one range is 15. That's what I found, right? Sample two range is uh, 12. That's what I found here as well. And it is also telling me that um, my range information for each subgroup is within my upper control limit and lower control limit. It means that my process is under statistical process control, all right? Not looking at this design specifications, upper specification limit and lower specification limit. Um, that let's assume that I use them um, from my design planning. Well, what else I see here? I do see a nice dot plot, right? So for each subgroup or sample, I do see where, how my five observations are uh, plotted, right? That's a nice visual to see your um, data. And I do see on the top right is a very important chart. Let me get rid of. Um, this portion. On the top right chart, I do see very important um, chart. It is actually the capability histogram. That's where I can start talking about my process capability. Remember, I entered 85 as my lower specification limit. Again, uh, this is completely different than my lower control limit. Lower control and upper control limit are calculated based on my data. On the other hand, my lower specification limit and upper specification limit are retrieved um, from my design specifications, okay? Uh, according to the design of this paint operation, the lower specification limit should be 85 and upper specification limit should be 115. It's that simple, all right? And this histogram is just telling my entire observations. How is my entire observations across all my samples are behaving? Um, does it look normal? Well, there's just a normal uh, test right beneath it. And what you see here is that p-value is much larger than 0 0.05. So basically I fail to reject that th this data is, um, uh, is not coming from normal distribution. So I assume that this data is um, actually a normal distribution. Actually, um, the bell curve is very obvious, right? Um, so I can assume that this data is coming from a normal probability distribution. Um, what I say by my uh, process capability, remember, I concluded that by looking at the expression in our, our, our chart, I concluded that um, my process is under statistical process control, but how am I doing with respect to the design specifications? Well, that's where I look at, um, that's when I look at the CP, CPK, 
and PP and PPK. Remember, 1.33 should be my number. And I see and I look at these numbers, both CP, CPK and PP, PPK, those are uh, below 1.33. Therefore, I should suspect that I'm not actually conforming to my design specifications. Um, as you can see, I do get some observations here below 85, and I do get some information, some, some observations above 115. And CP, CPK, PP, PPK are actually capturing that by suggesting that those values are less than 1.33. So I should be doing something about my process and my operation. Another information that you can get from this chart is PPN. Uh, if you go by CPCPK, uh, your, um, your um, per million uh, de um, defective number is uh, with um, CPCPK, 3,157. On the other hand, with PPPK, those are, um, that number is 4,214. Um, remember, you use PPPPK when you're just starting out the process. It is a new operation or process. If you have a well-established process and operation, you tend to look at CP and CPK. Well, can I retrieve um, process sigma value from this analysis? Yes, I can. All I have to do is to go to stats, redo the operation, but this time don't select CP, CPK, PPPPK, just select um, the six, six oh, sorry, sigma process level. And I go to stats, uh, quality tools, again, the same capable to six pack analysis, normal. And I keep my same lower specification, upper spe specification limits. This time I go to options. And here there's a choice that I can uh, select. Here it says benchmark Z's, in parentheses it says sigma level. Remember, there's a close relationship between CP and sigma level, but this time I'm going to go with the sigma level here and I hit okay, and I hit okay again. So this gives me the same charts, everything is the same except this portion. Instead of, uh, well, actually I do have CPK, but it's in PPK, instead of CP and PP, I do have these sigma levels. Well, Z bench is equivalent to sigma. Um, what is my sigma, process sigma level of this operation? Well, Zbench can be used as an estimate of sigma. It says 2.73 and here it says 2.63. But remember, we do have the sigma shift when we try to calculate the process sigma capability, right? All you have to do is to fuse, if, let's assume that this is not a new operation law. So let's use the Zbench here. 2.73 plus 1.5. My sigma level of this operation is 4.23. So is this good? This is not really close to having six sigma quality level because in six sigma quality level, the good thing is if you operate under six sigma quality level, uh, the, the defective parts that you, you produce out of million operations, I expect to see just 3.4, but how about here? So you operate on 4.26, sorry, 4.23 sigma level, and look at your defective product per million. It is around 3,157, not good. Not as good as running six sigma operation level. So in a nutshell, um, stack quality tools, and capable to six pack analysis can give you really, really nice, useful information about your process capability and statistical process control charts.